Nick Hancock, and this is the entrance to Room 101. It's the place that's there for all the nasty things in life. Whether it takes a sentence to describe, like finding out you've taken talking telephone numbers instead of the World Cup final, <laughs> or whether it can be summed up in one word, like, well, the word. <laughs> Each week, my guests will be trying to persuade me to add some of their own dislikes to the pile of unpleasantness. This week's contender is Richard E. Grant. This is comfortably the most famous and sexy person we've ever had on, Richard. And Thank you. oozing it with every moment. Oozing. Now remember, if you get more than three of your choices in, yeah. then you will be able to have a bonus choice from the ones I've rejected. So it's worth having a go for that, alright? Right. right, your first choice is from the world of fashion, and it's a it's a classic British summer look. <laughs> ah. Yes. <laughs> Sexual, <laughs> very attractive. Very, very attractive, those are. And usually worn by the Brit abroad. Yep, absolutely. Or right. Vickers. Vickers. Or Vickers. Yeah. Very sexy look. Very sexy. What's the problem, then? Well, <laughs> us well, apart from the equivalent of bad breath, bromidrosis, that you get the full stench of the feet, that, that's a starter. Then you get sort of these pterodactyl-like toenails <laughs> sticking out, <laughs> or big sort of four-door bunions sort of hoovering out this way. And or sort of unclipped or toe jammy cheesy old feet. Just, you know. Yeah, it is, it, it is a, definitely a very English thing because, um, I mean, if you think of something like the Ro Rodin's The Kiss, which is a, a beautiful sculpture, as you can see, now that was obviously done by a Frenchman, but if it had been done by an English sculptor, it, yes. it may well have looked uh, <laughs> sort of slightly more like that. Brilliant. <laughs> You don't, you, don't, you don't sort of subscribe to the idea that feet can be sexy because there are whole magazines dedicated to foot fetishism, you know, with are bits they? in the back for <laughs> readers' feet. <laughs> how and do you know about well, these? Well, we've got, we've, I'll tell you, we've, we've got a, a sexy video here telling you just how sexy feet are, if you have a look at this. I think the most sensual thing about massaging feet is the fact that my girlfriend has incredible feet. They really turned me on. I mean, it's almost as if feet are more personal than oh. feeling somebody's breasts. Mm. Because feet are areas that are extremely sensitive. I mean, you wouldn't want to do that, would you, really? <laughs> well, you're not doing it on mine, that's for damn sure. <laughs> I mean, would you want to suck the toes of that man? Really? <laughs> I think we should put it to the vote. <laughs> Almost. Uh, well, what I always th thought about it was, if that's what his face looks like, what do his feet look like? I also assumed that she had absolutely no sense of smell whatsoever. Yeah. So after a day of walking around Parliament, to then ask him to peel them off in those sporting shorts, oh, I think must have been... Abysmal. Abys but you like shoes, don't you? I do like shoes, yeah. I'm the Imelda Marcos of equity. Are you? Yeah, I love shoes. Is she, is she the Richard E. Grant of deposed dictator's wives? <laughs> yes. I am afraid, Richard, that we're not going to let uh, open-toed sandals with socks go in. To oh, I rest my face. No, no. Thank you. This, Thank you. This, this is not a popularity contest. I will show you. If this, right, is open-toed sandals yes. with socks, right, this is old people wearing flip-flops. <laughs> so, Aww. you see, it doesn't quite get there, even on its own argument. So you're going to have to pop those into your bag and take them home with you. <laughs> it's very good. You can, you can put that in your bin and people will think you've murdered a psychology lecture. <laughs> It'd be great. Oh, and you'll have to take David Miller as well. I'm afraid you do. That's <laughs> the ultimate punishment for you. Pop All it right. in there. Right. Your next choice now, Richard, and this, this is a song, and I must say, it's, it's nice, it's like an old friend. It's a song from the days when songs had a tune, and indeed, when songs had a story to tell. Let's have a look. I'm coming home. <laughs> now I've got to know what is, it isn't mine. If you receive my letter telling you I'd soon be free, then you'll know 
just what to do if you still want me. <laughs> you still want me. I do, and I think I know what to do. <laughs> That is actually, that is unique footage because that's... <laughs> Strangle you. <laughs> so what's your problem with this song? Surely an innocent and charming song about a convict returning from prison to find out if his loved one is waiting for him. Well, an everyday tale. I think this song came out about 1973 or 4 and... Uh, I was, which tells you my age, I was studying for O and A levels and David Bowie was somebody who I absolutely worshipped and had a D David Bowie haircut and I was listening to Deep Purple and Smoke on the Water and all that stuff. And my father said to me, this is the kind of song, this is the song <laughs> that I like in the house and this, this, you know, this is the kind of thing I like to hear on the radio. So because of that alone and every wedding I went to in the last, you know, 20 years since, <laughs> you know, if they want to get people up onto the floor, they put this bastard on. <laughs> Surely, surely that's the role of parents, isn't it? I mean, how would you have felt if, like, your dad had come and picked you up from school one day and said, oh, I've got a bit of news for you before I pick you up. I've become a goth. <laughs> that would have been fine. <laughs> so you, you, you just can't be doing with it? Can't be doing it at all. I, I sort of rather admire the guy because he's just come out of prison and then he's saying, bus driver, please look for me. I mean, he's risking another 18 months in prison for talking to the driver while the bus is in motion. <laughs> Like, it really can't. And also, like, if it had been in England, there'd have been no question of the old oak tree, because it wouldn't have been there. <laughs> He'd been away for three years, there'd be a happy eater. <laughs> I think it should go in, because it's, it's suitably evocative. Suitably this evocative. has beat the feet. This beat the feet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's that whole dad's thing, isn't it, really? We're going to put it in, we're going to put... There's the bus. There's the bus driver. <laughs> oh, God, like this. Yeah. And here's the old oak tree. Oh. <laughs> and have a little listen as we send in Tie a Yellow Ribbon to the Old Oak Tree by Tony Orlando and Dawn, if I remember rightly, into Room 101. The relief. You're up and running, you see, you're doing well. You're doing I feel well. sexual that it's gone, really. <laughs> This next choice is a television presenter, and it's a, she's a television presenter, I think, with the common touch, a real woman of the people. Let's have a look at her. This is a sweet wine, but most of all, it's a fruity wine. It's a grapey wine. And that's good in the magazine, something about a gardenia pepper sandwich. I've never here. tried one, but this, if it were to be <laughs> a gardenia pepper sandwich, is what it would be like. And it goes brilliantly with cheese. It's got lovely sort of raisiny overtones. It's got nuts. It's thick and... <laughs> so, do chill it, though. Very good chill. Don't just have it at the end of the meal with the Christmas put. Try it at the beginning of the meal. It's delicious with salty cheese. <laughs> have, you, have you ever? Thank you. Yeah. That's a choice. She says, try it at the beginning of the meal, it's delicious with salty cheese. <laughs> no. Which meal's this? But anybody called Jilly, who's a middle-aged woman, for a start, just gets my goat. <laughs> like swilly or Jilly, it's like so naff, just for a start. <laughs> Her hair's so like there's iron, like there's BBC programmes where everybody is middle class and drinks tea and they murder people and Agatha Christie thing. She's got that sort of ironed hair as well. <laughs> I wanted to you know, honestly, just kick the television in when she comes on. <laughs> because she does all this swilling around, and you can't, you can't taste this stuff. I'm allergic to alcohol for a start, so she may as well be describing farts in a farmyard. <laughs> I can't stand it. It's like, a, it's a genetically pre-programmed, sort of hive-inducing reaction that I have. To <laughs> and I'm sure she's very nice, and, you know, I apologise to her relatives, to her, if she wanted the show, but in there, please. <laughs> But it's, it's also the wine culture, because it's so, it's so different to, to, the, to the beer culture. Like, wine people go, oh, Sauvignon, it's very, very delicate, very interesting. And, like, people who like beer go, 
I'm really pissed. Exactly. <laughs> this is great. I know. And the wine does the same thing to you. So, you know, you've got to sniff, you know, the backside of a hippopotamus for two hours. You're still going to be, you know, completely legless. Exactly. Absolutely. By the end of it. And also, it's like, it's really easy to know what's good in wine. Because, like, there, there's only two rules, right? If it's got a picture on it, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing is, right, 3 99 wine, not as good as 4 99 wine. <laughs> That's how everyone else in the world chooses wine. They go into the off license and they think, how much do I like these people? <laughs> 2 dollars <99. laughs> No, no, I, but I'm not going to put Jilly Goulden into Room 101. Did you hear the applause? <laughs> It's a technicality. It's a technicality yet again. Uh, it's she... because you work in television, you see. No, no, not at all. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd want her to go in, but she can't go in because even in her own, her She's own small enough. area, <laughs> her own area, right, of, of irritating blonde presenters with annoying voices, she isn't yes. the worst because you seem to have forgotten this woman. Ah! <laughs> And so, along, as long as Annika Rice exists, Jilly Goulden can't possibly go in. So instead, you have to take home this... <laughs> Sister Jilly, it's particularly good, because look, look at the face. <laughs> you have to pop those in too. Oh, right, all right. Right, plenty of time, plenty of time to do well yet. Right, your next choice is a group of people, and one that we all know, they have a noble calling, but also they, they have a tendency to use the phrase lowest common denominator too often. Let's bring oh, them yes. around. Two and two are four, four and four are eight. It's like a Charlie Chaplin. So these are, in case anybody didn't know, Maths teachers. <laughs> <laughs> that was very dramatic. Well, what's your problem? I've been tortured by these people, <laughs> the entire profession, and three bastards in particular. <laughs> Name names. 1967, Mr. Lambert, bald and no doubt he may be dead now, but he's probably in a maximum security maths teacher's home. <laughs> I hope. 1971, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> Another bald person, sort of like a rat's pubes carapace of hair, <laughs> pulled across. And then 1973, Mr. Moran, and he used to say, right, Grant, show us this. And he just would torture me, gleefully, every week. <laughs> and uh, I hope he's dead too. <laughs> I have to say, I have never needed to count at all for anything, because they all do it on machines. I failed O-level maths twice. And the shame of that, I, well, you know, it's... I'm still carrying it now with me here. The chip pan is frying with shame <laughs> up here. Because the thing is, they have to make maths sort of more exciting for youngsters. It was very boring for us, but now like, they've made it really, really exciting to sort of compete with Nintendo and things like that. This is how they do it these days. Join in if you want. Hello. Today it's time for number... Five. <laughs> now, where does the number five go in the number time number line? <laughs> or one, or two, maybe three? No, definitely not four. Thank five. God it isn't 408. <laughs> That's where it goes. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Join One, two, two three, three, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, ten. ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would, I would just say, in its defence, that the Open University is a fantastic... <laughs> can't beat it. I, I used to be a teacher, and um, I went back and taught in a school the other week. It's a great thing. I know, it's amazing. You were a teacher. I was a teacher. Did was... you teach maths? No. <laughs> Do you think he's lying? What did you teach? Drama. <laughs> and PE. And PE. <laughs> It's another one where I was you tortured. Bastard. They said, make me play rugby, because they knew I was the thinnest, skinniest little sort of runt. He says, all right, Grant, you'll play rugby. I got tackled. I've got scars all over myself. Brain injury. 
I just got to tell you about this teacher. He was, he, was a, he was an RE teacher in this school. This is about three weeks ago. And he, he, he thought he was having this really good heart-to-heart -heart with his O-level set, right? He was talking about sex before marriage. And he thought it'd be a really good idea to show there was a lot of trust between him and the O-level set if he admitted to them that he was still a virgin. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> when you're training to be a teacher, oh. that should be the first thing. I agree. And of course they'll go, oh really, sir, that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then immediately at break time, every time he walks past anybody in the playground, they're all going, like a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna put, I think we should put maths teachers in. They've caused too much pain. Right. Put them in. Yes. Put them in. Yes. Put them in the slide, Send them into Room 101, have a listen for what's playing, and bye bye forever, maths teachers. Now, your next choice is a piece of your own work. It's an advert from early on in your career, and it's one of which I believe you're justifiably proud. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, come on. Axel announce a new member of the lineup, the Astra SRI. <laughs> You'll find no shortage of equipment. And now the SRI has a fuel injected 1800 engine, making it capable of 123 miles an hour. Drive the new Astra SRI and leave the crowd behind. <laughs> Richard E. Grant, the early years. <laughs> the, re the reason that I did this, I desperately needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> Bob did. Geldof That's... had been canonised at the time of, of uh, the Band-Aid thing, yeah. which tells you how long ago it was. I had more hair then. And uh, so they th I think they thought they could get a cheap sort of Geldofian look-alike. So, <laughs> so that was you, why you I was in there. You were a low-rent Bob Geldof then. <laughs> <laughs> I was a very low-rent Bob Geldof. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a great idea, isn't it, that rock stars come out, you know, out from a, a gig and get in a Vauxhall Astra. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the idea of the car park, so right, at Live Aid, round the back, and it's just ranks of Vauxhall Astras. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in no position, no position to criticise, because I have done, I hold my hand up, I have done a fruit and fibre advert. Can we see it? No. But I have said, for money, on television... Yes. Apples, hazelnut, sultanas. <laughs> so I, I'm in no position to possibly criticise you. But I think it's not actually your worst advert, is it? Because... Uh... <laughs> no! No! <laughs> this is why your Vauxhall advert can't go into room 101. This is your advert that you did with Elizabeth Hurley, the face of Estee Lauder. My face of shame. Six it's Schweppes tonics, tonics, please. Sorry, we're down to the last of the Schweppes. We have these, though. You were here first. Thanks. I like this bit now. Because what do dogs sniff on other dogs? <laughs> they sniff noses! Well done. Not going to telephone number. That's Naffa, isn't it? <laughs> don't you think? I don't know how you found that. I don't know how you expect me to carry on on this programme. <laughs> <laughs> just awful. Just Get awful. Rid of it soon. Yep. I just wondered if there was like more footage later when Elizabeth goes off with the inferior tonics and gets mugged by four 14-year-old girls. <laughs> yes. Now that I'd like to see. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, I'm afraid we can't let that in. So we're going to give you instead this to take home and show to your family. Uh, it's Richard E. Grant, the adverts. <laughs> Video available now, so take that home. Thank you. Sorry about that, and we'll move on to your next choice. You have chosen for this video the very people that pay your wages. Ah, oh, right. Cinema audiences, Richard. Yeah. A couple of the evidence, maybe, maybe the Maltesers as well. Yeah. Lovely. This is sort of like an instant recipe for a fart. And <laughs> on a massive scale, I, I, I try and go to the matinee of a, of a movie because 
if I'm sitting on a plane, a train, in a, in a cinema, wherever, I always get people who either do this, they, 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 the cinema can be completely empty and they'll come and sit next to me and they'll be like this. <laughs> <laughs> Or then they're sitting, because, because of the angle of the seats, there's somebody who'll be sitting right behind you who'll be doing this. <laughs> you think, oh Christ, at least I've got it open now. <laughs> Hopefully they're wine gums. Then this follows. <laughs> At which point I do it. <laughs> people like develop a particular talent for it. There are people who can make that oh, so yeah. loud. You like maths teachers. Yeah, you, you can't hear the bombing scene in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> absolutely. It's absolutely staggering. Maybe we should, we should try and sort of uh, show the way it works. It, we'll, we'll put on a film clip. Like, if we're watching Brief Encounter, right, in the Odeon oh, and Stoke, and, and we, can so be, we can be the cinema audience, just to give a flavour of it. It is true for me, isn't it? I don't have any feeling about the It is true for you. <coughs> what was that? <laughs> Do you want a Malteser? <laughs> but I would say... I would say that occasionally, occasionally you do hear bits of conversation which are completely fascinating. <laughs> and like that's, sort of, that's sort of part of my argument why I don't want it to go in, because the other week... Well, let me just, I think if I tell you this story... <laughs> I told the producer we should have got Emu. <laughs> The madness of King George III, right, and a woman said behind us, and I didn't turn around to find out what she was referring to, this was the phrase she came out with. No, I'm not. <laughs> My father said, if it don't swim up the Thames, don't put it in your mouth. <laughs> You, you've got to admit that is a good enough reason. <laughs> so you can bloody well take them out. You home. are a maths teacher. <laughs> I have to take this home. You have to take all these home. <laughs> just tidy this lot up and we'll get on with the next one, all right? <laughs> you see? He does, he does all his own stunts. <laughs> Well done. Right, now we can move right. on to the next choice. Thank you right. very much. And it's a woman who proves definitively that class will tell. Lady <laughs> Where can you start on this one, then? How can we live in a country where a total idiotic vulgarian like this personage could have gone from being a commoner to being where people are literally, you know, that look that people have when they see royalty. <laughs> Every ounce of my exorbitant tax that I have to pay, if it goes for one button's worth on her appalling clothing that I regularly <laughs> see in Hello! magazine, <laughs> I hate her. Well, Where is the hospital money for St. Bart's? In the frocks. That's yes. what I think. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at, at Fergie in some of her most memorable expressions and some of her most memorable frocks. Here she is, proving what an asset to the nation she is. She yes. Is I can't forget It was a pleasure or regret Maybe my dress Oh, that's the best, the quilt. Yeah. <laughs> I like want the toe-sucking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> she toe-sucked before Antonia did with old true. Melichops. But there's a whole new expression that can be invented for her, which is pork dressed as mutton. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. You just... Yes. You just... Oh. 
You just, uh, you just wish, right, that Prince Andrew had married somebody sort of more sophisticated, more dignified, and with more dress sense, like Sue Pollard, for instance. Yes! <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Anything else to say about it? Not, a bit of a rant. A bit of a rant, yes. I'm sorry I went on such a rant, but... No, that's and you shouldn't harbour such strong feelings about another human being, because after all, it's not her fault that she was genetically so moronically stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what about her father? I mean, her father's just as embarrassing. They must... When they meet, they must, must be like a race for the first one to say, You've embarrassed me again! <laughs> and she, like, she gets around so much, she must have enough... She does. She must have and enough... who is paying for this? You know what? She's got to have enough... We are! En enough, enough air miles to get to Venus, so why she doesn't go there? <laughs> I tell you, this, this could get her to Venus. <laughs> we can't help but put Fergie in, can we? She's got to go She out. has got to go! Yes! Yes! <laughs> the most odious smell in the stench of royals. Yes. Let's send her in, have a little listen, and bye-bye, Fergie. Bye, Ferg. Some girls will... <laughs> Uh, that was, uh, do you remember that song? No. Some Girls by Racy. That was Racy going for the, uh, the feminist market, I think. <laughs> right. Now, you have done very well, Mr Grant. You have managed to get your three in. And so that means that you're going to be able to choose one of the ones I've rejected to go in as a bonus item. So have a little rummage in there. I, don't, I think we rejected cinema audiences. Jilly Goulden. Sandals with socks. Anybody? <laughs> Julie Golden, put it on there. It's going to be Julie Golden, and may I say, finally, thank you very much to Richard E. Grant. And as Jilly Golden goes through the doors, we'll end with a final clip from Room 101, in which a smoke machine tries unsuccessfully to prevent the audience from seeing an awesomely bad dance routine.